Dr. Angela Morgan, welcome to Shrinkwrap Radio. Thank you, David. Nice to be here. Well, it's a pleasure to have this opportunity to speak with you and to meet you and to discuss your many involvements and accomplishments in the world of dream work. Um, and we're going to be discussing a bit of your own history with dream work, as well as the International Association for the Study of Dreams and their upcoming virtual conference. So get yeah. to get started with you. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe that um, you were introduced to dream work by your psychologist's father. Is mm -hmm. that right? Yes. Yeah, tell us about that. Yeah. Um, when I was a very small child, I was having some nightmares and my dad had been studying uh, Kilton Stewart's Sonoy dream theory. Yes. And so he was using those tools to teach me what to do and how to uh, actually become lucid in my dreams. Wow. Um, starting at a very young age between four and five. Wow. And have you, have you uh, been able to retain that lucidity uh, in, throughout your life? Yes. I mean, it's, it's definitely been, um, it's an evolving process. And the way I term it is building lucid muscles. Like when uh, you practice lucid dreaming yes. over time, it just becomes part of who you are and, and how you, weave back and forth between the dreaming and the waking life. I can believe that. I've never put in that kind of sustained practice. And, you know, there are times when I sort of was reading about lucid dreaming. And so I would get inspired and, you know, decide to uh, remember to look at my hands or some other <laughs> visual cue, you know, in the dream. And I've had maybe two or three, um, but I'm one of those people, and I guess this is a known phenomenon, of um, I get so excited. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. lucid. <laughs> and it right. pulls me right out of it. Yeah. 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 Is yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've heard about that. And um, so then you've had a lifelong involvement with dreams and it's carried into your adult life. Maybe you can sure. give us a couple of the high spots sure. along that high, journey. The high spots of the, the dream evolution. Um, so after working with my father, uh, my next mentor with dreaming and dream work um, was Eduardo Duran, uh, PhD. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, but he's going to be one of the keynote speakers. That's, how, that's where I know the name. Unfortunately, I, I didn't know. And I, I tried to get set up to interview him, but I think there was an, uh, he needed to turn me down. I think there was a conflict. Uh, perhaps. Yeah. Well, hopefully someday you'll get to speak with him and, and in the meantime, um, hear him at the ISD conference. Yes. But he, he's uh, uh, one of my favorite people in the world. He's just amazing. And when I was a teenager, he helped me um, work with some really powerful initiation type dreams, spiritual dreams. Um, he's just an incredible person. Um, so then my next mentor in dreaming was Clara Stewart Flagg, the widow of Kilton Stewart. Right. And I was an undergrad. At, I was a theater, film, and television major at UCLA. And I, so, you know, I have had this creative life that I was focusing on mostly in my, um, my career as a young person, but the dream exploration and the dream work was happening all along parallel. Yeah. So, so that that's kind of my my biography, how it weaves together, and how it led me to helping people get in touch with dreams and creativity, and to find that link between the two. Yeah, and you went to Saybrook, I believe, for that's a PhD. Yes. And, and you worked with Stanley Krippner, who I've interviewed on the show a number of times, and who I've yes. known personally uh, for a long time over the years. Incredible incredible guy. So was your dissertation, I know that creativity and dream work, uh, mm -hmm. those two combined are very strong uh, orientation in your life. And 
did you was your dissertation uh, did you work with Stanley Krippner on that? Mm-hmm. I did. He was on my dissertation committee. Um, and it, my actual dissertation uh, was a phenomenological um, study uh, with the link between dreams and creativity in the life of professional creative artists. Uh-huh. Um, but I focused on literary artists by the time I got to my dissertation. In my Saybrook journey, though, leading up to the dissertation, I did several other studies using uh, phenomenology with Amadeo Giorgi as well, and documentary filmmaking as a research method, which was kind of a, a new thing for Saybrook <laughs> to to uh, approve and yeah and allow. So I for- uh, fortunately they. They're flexible that way. Right, right. Still, I hope. Yeah. Well, yeah, I hope so too. Um, but definitely that was new at the time, um, early 2000s. And so what I ended up doing was interviewing a lot of visual artists, performing artists of all fields and domains. And then by the time I got to the literary artists, I had all this other data to really look at you know, what, what's going yeah. on with these different fields of performing visual and literary artists and what is the difference um, with their relationship between dreams and creativity. Well, so, w- can you give us kind of a thumbnail sketch of what you found? Mm-hmm. Sure. So in, in general, and again, this, you know, th- this was under 100 people total, so it wasn't, um, you know, conclusive. But as an exploration, what I found was Uh, performing artists, their relationship with dreams is more along the lines of what can dreams do for me? How can dreams help me as an artist, as a performer? How can my dreams, how can I practice my flute in my dream and then be better the next day? How can I get ideas for my character or for the play I'm directing? How can I, you know, so for performance, it's a little more centered around the ego around, you know, Uh how can dreams serve my art? Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. (laughs) (laughs) And then there's um, the visual artists tended to have, and this was across the board with my research so far. um, The visual artists had more of a spiritual connection to um, where they saw themselves as a vessel for the dream. Mm -hmm. Like the dream is a spiritual connection or entity and it's coming through me and I am egoless practically. It just is yeah, the yeah. vessel for the art. And then with the literary artists, this was kind of mind blowing for me at the time. Now it makes a lot more sense is um, the relationship with dreams for literary artists was about healing from loss and grief in relationship. Uh Interesting. A way to heal. Yeah. In in all of my work, you know, as a psychologist in my third career, it's really just so clear to me how the arts are healing and how dream work is healing. And when you put them together, it's, it's very powerful how healing it can be for people. Yeah. So you mentioned that at UCLA, you majored in theater arts, you said. Uh, what was it again? Something in theater arts? Right. Theater, film, and television was my major. Uh, okay. And so you ended up making... Theater, film, and television. Yeah. You, you made a film mm-hmm. that I, tr- I tried to find it on Amazon or someplace. <laughs> I don't know if, if there's any place it could be streamed from, but uh, what was the name of that film again? It's called uh, Linked. The Dream Creativity Connection from 2010. Um, There's information about it on IMDb. And you can also um, contact me through thedreambridge.com if you are interested in viewing the film. I need to make it more publicly available. Uh, But what I do have right now on the the Dreambridge YouTube channel, it's youtube.com slash thedreambridge. There are a lot of videos where I've taken excerpts from the film for specific shorter messages. 
Yeah, was the film around the research that you did then for your mm -hmm. doctoral dissertation? So it shows uh, uh, the interviews that you did or segments from the interviews. Right. And I went on your website, The Dream Bridge. So you've got a YouTube channel, The Dream Bridge. You've right. got, let the audience know, you want to go to thedreambridge.com. That's right. And that's a very uh, full website with a lot of content uh, that also links into the film with, if you go to, there are a lot of places you can go on that website. So as I was wandering around, I found myself watching segments that I think came from that film. You've also written books. Right. Yeah. Tell us about your books. Yeah. So uh, there are two books that I've written. Actually, there are two books that I've written that are specifically uh, aimed for children and families. Yeah. So the first one is The Alpha Bliss of Mists. Yeah. And that is a book full. It's through the alphabet, 26 feminine magical beings, uh, fairies, uh, gnomes, angels, elemental beings, yeah. uh, mermaids, everything. Um, through the alphabet with poetry and original art that I did, um, to empower the divine feminine and also to give children allies for their dreams because dream allies is, are something uh, that my dad taught me about when uh -huh. I was you know, very young. And also um, it's part of Sonoy dream work, uh, Kilton Stewart Sonoy dream theory. And it's, um, yeah, it's, it's full of, to show you for the video part, the listeners oh, good. can see this. Yeah. There are all kinds of, of beautiful divine feminine beings in that one. And then the other one is Dreamer's Powerful Tiger, which is a new lucid dreaming classic for children and parents of the 21st century. And this one is, uh, was co-illustrated with my daughter. Uh -huh. so she and I did the, the art for that one. Yeah. That one yeah, is I, more of a lucid dreaming primer, I would call it, for children um, and families, for parents to also hold that space. I feel it's so important, and I, I do groups with parents to, you know, to teach them how to be a dream guide. Yeah. And Dreamer's Powerful Tiger is a big part of that. That story is a big part of that, that teaching. Well, I looked at those uh, on on Amazon, you know, as much as I'll let you look, and I really got a, a sense of them, and they look uh, very magical for parents that want to uh, raise their kids with that wisdom and get, get them off to a good start like you got in the dream world. And I assume that was something you did with your own your own family. Yes, my I have two children, a son and a daughter, and they're uh, second generation Sonoy inspired dream <laughs> dream workers. Yeah. Uh, th there's one other book I want to mention, if that's okay. I have a chapter in it, and it's called Sleep Monsters and Superheroes. This one, uh huh, empowering children through creative dream play, and this is this one is more for adults, so okay. people who work with children or teenagers. Um, it's this is the one I also highly recommend. Yeah, yeah, great. That's wonderful. Um, anything more that you want to say about your Dream Bridge site? Because as I say, that's so rich. Mm, thank you. Um, what can I say? Uh, I offer a lot of courses and workshops on there as well. So, um, I work with all ages, you know, I do uh, children and teenagers and parents and adults and uh, therapists and psychologists, you know, I work with a wide range all around this topic. So, um, yeah. yeah so to so dream groups are, are an important part of your work. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I've been in dream groups off and on in my life. Some, some of long duration. I was in a dream group. I, don't remember how many years it was, but it was uh, quite a few years. And, um, and so it's a wonder. And also I taught classes, uh, undergraduate courses in which on, on myths, dreams, and symbols. And uh, the dream work was a great tool in the undergraduate environment. I highly recommend it to all. 
professorial people out there <laughs> who have who work in a place where you would be allowed to do that because it does go uh it can quickly go very deep and um yes i've, I've thought of it as a way to you know how do you get to know people to get beyond um, my sign is and here's where I went to school and here's the job that I do. And to get beyond all of that, there's sharing dreams is just one of the best tools around. Yes. To, to really get deep life. with people. You're so honest. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, of course, dreams, um, you know, you worked with a, with a Native American sh shaman kind of context, and I'm wondering if there's any notable guidance that you've received from your dreams that you can share with us. Maybe there are some uh, key instances in your life where uh, you receive dream guidance. Is there anything you're comfortable sharing with us? Sure, sure. Absolutely. Well, one that comes to mind is when Clara Stewart Flagg passed away, um, I was pregnant with my first child, my daughter, and I had a dream. Uh, I was, you know, feeling the loss of, of mm -hmm. Clara. And she was in my dream uh, shortly afterward. Um, and it felt like a visitation dream. Mm -hmm. And there was this warm glow, this golden glow around her. And telepathically, she spoke to me and said, um, why not start a dream group? <laughs> 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 it was, you know, that was her blunt way of speaking. Why not? But, but it was so beautiful too. It was like this passing on the lineage of, you know, everything that I've taught you, you are now ready to start your own. So and, that had, you, had you not felt empowered to do that up to that point? Um, Right. I had joined her dream group when I was uh, almost 19, I think. Mm -hmm. And I was in that dream group that had been together for 15 years before I joined it. Wow. And then I was with, I was the youngest member in that group, but I was with them for five years before Clara died. Uh -huh. And so, yes, I, she was a powerful teacher for me. And so it was this kind of initiation of, you know, a yeah. on of, it's time, it's time for you to start. So that was my very first dream group that I ever had, um, ever led, facilitated was in 1995 when I was, you know, pregnant and still pregnant and, <laughs> yeah. you know, put up the flyer and, and started the group and, uh, that started my uh, a whole path in California and Oregon of, of doing dream groups, Sonoy inspired dream groups uh, from the barter system, you know, people bringing me macrobiotic beans and foot rubs, <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. as payment. For yeah. them. You know, so it, it, that was a very, very special um, message and experience. Yes. And let's see, lately I've been getting a lot of, couplets like rhymes uh -huh. in my lucid dreams so i'll take this to a more recent phenomenon uh the pandemic yeah <laughs> okay so that happened <laughs> and in a lucid dream i heard this voice very clearly this is not a time to give in i i think the i think our, i think our connection cut out and we didn't hear that couplet oh dear well, I'll have to repeat it then. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was, this is not a time to give in. This is time to build strength from within. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, then more recently with the virtual conference, um, this is a time of pep and cheer, not a time of dread and fear. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. Good. <laughs> So, and, yes, guidance happens all the time is what I'm saying in my dreams. Wow, wow. And we, you know, we know that uh, dreams also are, uh, let's see. 
Sorry. You're back. <laughs> You're back. <laughs> uh, we know that there's a, a connection between psychic events and dreams for many people and right. a, a well, well documented. Have there been, and you mentioned the dream with Clara Flagg where you felt there was some kind of telepathic uh, communication. Are there any other notable psychic hits that you've experienced in your dream life? Uh, we mentioned Stanley Krippner, and he was the person that really first got me interested in that psychic dimension because he did really credible research. Oh, yes, yes. You know, I, I was in, yeah, I was in graduate school, uh, just finishing up in graduate school, and somebody said, "Hey, have you seen this?" and and I, like it was kind of mind blowing. Wow, you can really yeah. study this, and it, so. Yeah, that dream telepathy book was on my parents' bookshelf when I was a child. I, I have it yeah. online now, right? And I didn't know that I would be working with Stanley and teaching with Stanley. And you know, we've taught we've taught the extraordinary dreams course at Sophia University. I teach it now without him, but we taught it several times together first. And so, if you look, you know. Um, the book you're familiar with the extraordinary dreams and how to work with them book. So I'm there not are, sure if I know that book. Ah, okay. It's wonderful. It's a uh, Stanley Krippner, um, Fariba Bogzaran and Andre Parcia de Carvalho. And it's, they categorize all the main extraordinary types of dreams uh -huh. and, you know, from a lucid clairvoyant, um, precognitive, telepathic, pregnant, um, you know, pregnancy dreams, uh, creative dreams, um, and it goes on. So th there, there's a whole list of, I think there's 14 of them. And so, yes, I have experienced at least once all of those categories, <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. which makes it, you know, um, a lot more doable to teach them. Um, to have that, that experience. And um, let's see, something notable I could say about that is that my first IASD conference was in 2009 in Chicago. And I was asked to be the sender uh, for the dream telepathy contest. So every year at the annual conference, there's a dream telepathy contest. And it's very loosely based on Ullman and Krippner's experiments it at Maimonides in the sleep. Yes. Uh, but it's, uh, and I think it was, it was Bob Van de Castle and Rita Dwyer who were running that at the time. And so they, they, over the years between 2009 and I think 2013, I was asked again and again. So for several years, I was the sender. And one of the things that uh, that I did differently from the protocol, which is, you know, you take the envelope that you chose to your hotel room, you know, you, you look at the image, you send it to everybody, and then they're receiving. So they're, yeah. they're getting the psychic hits. Then they write their dream report, submit it into the box with the image they think it is. The judges sort through it. And, and it's a fun contest. It's really yeah. fun to do. Um, so anyway, when I did it, I got a, a image of a rocket blasting into space. <laughs> so here I am. This was, was this, this was, this wasn't when you were the sender, was it? Yes. This when was... I was the sender. Okay. So I'm, I'm looking at the image in my hotel room and I'm supposed to send that image to everybody psychically. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, when I did that, I ended up uh, sending for a while and then meditating and going into a lucid dream and then writing down what I dreamed and then sending, meditating, lucid dream. And that happened in cycles. So one year it was eight times, one year, 12 times, but I ended up with a lot of data that wasn't asked of me, but I ended up having all these dream reports that we could compare to other, the submitted dream reports. And so what we found was there was a lot of mutual and shared, uh, you know, collective dreaming happening. Yeah. Evidence wow. of it anyway. So right. Pretty uh, rich, rich experiences there with psychic hits. Oh, and I have a video about all that, by the way, on the 
the Dream Bridge YouTube channel called My Life as a Not So Secret Agent. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, because I found uh, I found an account of some of that on on a YouTube, but I I don't know if it was part of that YouTube or or another one. But we, you've made several references to uh, the IAS, the International Association for the Study of Dreams, and. I know that you have been president. Are you currently president of that association? Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. How long have you been president? (laughs) (laughs) Well, (laughs) how uh, how many times? (laughs) One time, two years. The term is usually one year, but I um, I agreed to do two years um, when I was asked, and I will be finishing up in June. So my term will be through at the conference. I'll hand the baton to Michelle Carr, who will be the next president. She's been the vice president with me for two years. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a great organization that um, I think I went to probably one of the very first IASD uh, conferences held somewhere in Marin, and it was a, a much smaller affair. I think at a at a, at a Unitarian church and uh, met some of the movers and shakers. And um, it's just a remarkable organization. And maybe you can say, <laughs> tell people about the organization and why they maybe we should think about joining. Yes, absolutely. I'd love to. ISD changed my life. I mean, I, we talked a lot earlier about my journey with dreams and dream work. But when Stanley Krippner, um, when I first started at Saybrook was when Stanley said, you really need to join the IASD because he said, you've been working in a bubble. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it's true. I, I, I was doing all this work, but I didn't realize there was this incredible organization with so many other people like me. Yeah. Yeah who are as passionate about dreams as I am, people who, uh, there's this in, incredible um, eclectic um, international dream community. And people have come from different backgrounds. They're not all psychologists. You know, there are a lot of psychologists. There are a lot of uh, different, um, you know, the, uh, researchers and clinicians. Uh, we have artists, um, you know, there's dream. Uh, well, and also also non-professionals, right? Uh, right. Just just ordinary people who are dream interested in dreaming. Is what we yeah, call them. <laughs> dream enthusiasts. Yeah. So that exactly. really, it's it, to me that's the one of the most remarkable things about this organization is that it combines people who are professionals in the field either right. as clinicians or as scientists right? with, what did you call them again? <laughs> Dream enthusiasts. Dream enthusiasts. Yes. And, yes. and, and so that's such a, a rich mix and it's, it's open arms to, to anybody. And that's just yeah. a wonderful thing about yeah. it. Yeah. We have, you know, uh, this year, um, well, first just about the organization in general, um, when you join and you become a member, there are benefits that you get. And yeah. for example, we have the, an APA journal called Dreaming, and you may have heard about it, but that's an ISD publication. We have um, Dreamtime magazine. There are research grants, annual conference discounts, and also um, regional conferences. You can get discounts at that. There's professional development and networking, online courses, and a dream study groups program, which I, I'm the co-chair of the dream study groups program with Michelle Carr, our next president. So there's online, um, you know, wonderful offerings there. We have dream art awards for artists. So there are, there are a lot of wonderful reasons to join ISD um, in general without even focusing on our, our juicy conference coming up. Yeah, so if you're a listener or viewer of this interview, uh, maybe you're in a bubble <laughs> in terms of being somewhat isolated. And here's this wonderful welcoming community that's just waiting for you. And you will learn so much and you'll make new friends. And, you know, you, you may end up uh, 
being in a dream group uh, <laughs> virtually with people from across the world, across the country. Um, so incredible. And, and the, uh, the, the annual conferences when they were live and in person, mm -hmm. uh, those are the ones that I've been to. I haven't attended a virtual one, right. but those were so enriching because you meet people and, and um, hear yeah. inspiring presentations from researchers and so on yeah. and clinicians and different tracks like other kinds of conferences that grew over the years, you know, yes. and it just, just became still growing. Uh, still growing. Still growing. <laughs> yeah. It just became this amazing, <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Uh, we were going thing. to do uh, this year it, as a physical conference in Ashland, Oregon, where I live, I was going to host it with Kelly Bulkley. Um, but the pandemic and, and the conditions, and it wasn't safe or ready uh, to have that many people. We usually have three to 400 people at the physical conferences, usually. Yeah, yeah. And, and you've uh, done them in, in, in the U.S., but, but also is it every other year would be in an in a international location? Right. 2019 was at uh, Rolduk um, in the Netherlands um, at the Rolduk Abbey. So yes, we do uh, definitely um, shuffle it around. Yeah. Um, but what we did, what we ended up doing was we rescheduled the Ashland conference. Uh, we're thinking optimistically for the future. And we rescheduled that one for 2023 because in 2022, our conference will be in Tucson. So we will have the physical conferences again, hopefully. That is what we are yeah. all looking for. And dreaming uh, about projecting dreaming in about your dreams. and actively, <laughs> <laughs> actively working on that. Yeah. And um, but this year we are doing uh, the virtual a virtual conference. Last year in 2020, we only offered something very limited. It was it was um, the keynotes. Uh, okay. We had a special June offerings because we didn't have enough time to put a full conference together with six or seven tracks and all of the things we offer online at such short notice. But this last year, we've been working so hard, the people working mm -hmm. on the conference, and we're going to have a wonderful full conference, um, just like the physical one, except virtual. And that'll be on the Zoom platform, like what everyone is used to um, yeah. doing. Um, so so there's that. And, and we're going to offer... Um, so you know, but not everybody knows what is usually offered. Would you like me to kind of paint yeah, that? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. So there, there are morning dream groups that you can sign up to be in. And uh, we've got, you know, I think about a dozen of those. Um, and then there are five tracks of workshops and symposia. And the featured tracks this year, um, which started off, uh, one of them is Dreams in the Arts. And that started off because we were going to be in Ashland, but you know, so what? Yeah. <laughs> we're still featuring dreams in the arts uh, virtually. And then the other one is dreams and ethnicity, which is a new track. And that one is mm. being co-directed by Edward Bruce Bynum, who I think you have interviewed in the past. That's, that's true. Yeah. And Alaya Danu. Um, who both, they are both serving on ISD's new um, diversity advisory committee, which I've been chairing. Um, so it's, I'm very excited about that, um, that track. There's some wonderful presentations happening in that. And then we have some amazing keynote speakers every year. And this year we have Fanny Brewster, um, who, if you haven't heard about Fanny Brewster, please look her up and also come <laughs> hear her speak at ISD. Um, Eduardo Duran, Tori Nielsen, Keith Salmon, who does uh, film performance art um, with nature and dreams. And then Michael Nadorf, who you interviewed recently. I did, yes, yes, just recently. So we have all of those keynotes. And then what am I leaving out here? Aha, the Dream Telepathy Contest will be happening. Uh, the Dream Art Show will be happening. And then there will be a Dream Ball, which we always have at the end. This will be a virtual Dream Ball on Zoom, but we will have a band playing live. 
for us. Uh-huh. Wow. That's, that's so much to, to go virtually. What about costs? What does it cost to join the association? Mm-hmm. And, and uh, what does it cost to attend this virtual conference? You may not have all these numbers in front of you, but. Well, no, I, I can tell you that uh, to be a member, if you are, um, so for both, there's, there's the member price and the non-member price, and then there's student and low income, and we try, and then there's corporate. So to be a member, for example, um, it's generally around a hundred dollars, um, and for a couple, you know, 150 for a student, 65, mm-hmm. limited income, 65, and so yeah. on. And then there's corporate rates. Um, and then to attend the conference, um, let me see here. I do have those numbers for you. To attend the conference, so for the physical conferences, it's usually higher, it's around 500. Um, dollars for the yeah. it's a five day conference jam packed so, right and uh, and and you uh generally in, in the real ones uh the real life ones you have to <laughs> stay at a hotel or someplace so right yeah, that so it, there's travel expenses in the hotel yeah. which we don't have this year so you don't have to go anywhere you can be in your living room or your office and in your pajamas yeah. it's fine um but the uh, to attend the virtual conference this year, it's between 100 and 350, depending. So non-member, member, student, limited incomes, um, right. student, partial scholarship. So the way to find out which one of these is your number mm-hmm. <laughs> is, is to go to um, IASD conferences.org slash 2021 and you will be able to to click on registration and see the numbers there and and which one is yours yeah and i'll put a link to that uh, also if you become a member if you become a member you get the lower rate for the conference yeah so yeah so too the main website for isd is uh, asdreams.org if you just want to become a member yeah. And um, well, I think maybe we've done it here. Is there anything more that we, that you'd like to say before we uh, ring off? Um, how about I'll give everyone the dates. It's June 13 to 17. Very good. Yes. <laughs> and uh, just, I want to thank you for all the good work you do. And um, I you. appreciate you having, having me on as a guest today. Well, it's been wonderful, uh, Dr. Angel Morgan, having you as my guest on Shrink Wrap Radio.